In this video, we will examine the practical applications of the accrual basis of accounting and how it affects both balance sheet and the income statement. We will learn about the four main categories of the adjusting entries under the accrual basis and how best to visualize them so that no matter what accounting problem is presented to you, you will be able to interpret them correctly. Welcome to Accounting Zero to Hero. We are here to help you understand the fundamental accounting concepts through simplified technical discussions and practical applications of the accounting standards. All of this to help you go from zero to hero. Now let's go back to the video. The four types of adjusting entries under the accrual basis can be generally grouped into those affecting revenue and those affecting expenses. Further, these can be classified as to whether it was an unpaid transaction or if there is an advanced payment. When a revenue is earned but the payment is not yet received, it is classified as accrued revenue. In contrast, when a customer pays for the revenue in advance, it is classified as a prepaid or unearned revenue. When an expense is incurred but the company has not yet paid the supplier, the transaction is classified as an accrued expense. And finally, when the company pays for goods or services in advance, it is classified as a prepaid expense. Let's go to the revenue section, particularly the accrued revenues. Accrued revenue adjustments happen when revenue or income is earned during the period, but the related cash has not yet been collected, or the customer has not yet been formally billed. A perfect example is when the company rendered services towards the end of the year, and the related invoice has not yet been issued or the amount has not yet been paid. As a result, the customer received the bill the following year and then it was eventually paid. It is an adjusting entry because based on the accrual basis, this income, even though billed and collected in the following year, actually belongs to the previous year, to year one. The journal entry to record and accrued revenue is a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to sales revenue. It is important to remember that under accrued revenue, we are recording an income because it is rightfully earned during the period even though cash has not yet been collected, which is why we have this accounts receivable over here which goes to the balance sheet. A deferred revenue is the opposite of accrued revenue. It is when the company receives money from a customer in advance, but the related goods or service are delivered or rendered in a different period. It is called deferred revenue because the revenue recognition in the income statement is deferred to the next period. An example of deferred revenue are subscription payments for magazines that companies receive in advance from customers. In this business model, the customers can normally pay one year in advance. This means that the company will regularly receive cash during the year for services that are yet to be performed, which is the delivery of magazines in future periods. Upon the receipt of cash, the entry to record deferred revenue is a debit to cash and a credit to a liability account we call as unearned revenue. Both accounts go to the balance sheet because under the accrual basis, we only recognize amounts in the income statement when the income is earned. In this case, when the magazines are actually delivered. By the end of the year, you need to determine the portion of unearned revenue that can go to the income statement by checking how much magazines were delivered during the year. For example, if the one-year subscription was paid on July 1 for subscriptions starting July, then 50% of the amount has been earned. Now, you have to debit unearned revenue to reduce it by half and credit the subscription's revenue. Only by then will an amount go to the income statement to reflect the portion of magazines actually delivered during the period. If we follow the ledgers of these accounts, you will see that the subscription's revenue account has 50% of the payment, while the unearned revenue in the balance sheet has the remaining 50%. The unearned revenue represents the portion of magazines that are yet to be delivered in the coming months. We now come to the expense section of the discussion starting off with accrued expenses. Accrued expenses are adjusting entries to recognize expenses that are incurred but unpaid by the company during the year. Under the accrual basis, you should only recognize the expense that pertains to the period you are accounting for. A typical example of an accrued expense are the bonuses to employees that remain unpaid as at the current year end, even though the payment of these bonuses happen sometime in the subsequent year. Since these bonuses are typically based in previous year performance, the expense should be recognized in the previous year. How do we do that then? The most common way of accounting for accrued expenses is to debit the related expense and credit a liability account. The liability account signifies the company's intent to pay this bonus in the future while recognizing that the impact Back to the company's performance should happen in year one. What happens in year two is that the company will just debit the liability account to decrease it and credit cash upon payment of the bonus. 
Prepaid expenses result from transactions wherein the company pays in advance for something that is yet to be used or the usage extends to the next accounting period. This needed a separate category because if the company paid for something and its use extended to the next accounting period, only the portion that was used in the current period should go to profit or loss. The rest are capitalized as assets in the balance sheet. The best example is rent. Let's say that on August 1, you paid an equivalent of one year's rent amounting to a total of 12,000. If your accounting period ends in December 31, then you should only have five months of rent appearing in your income statement instead of the whole 12. The entry to record the payment of the rent is a debit to prepaid rent and a credit to cash. Upon year end, your adjusting entry should decrease the amount of prepaid rent to their 7 remaining months of the contract by crediting the prepaid rent by 5k and debiting rent expense for the same amount. If you follow the T accounts of these two, you will see that in the expense portion we have 5 months of rent and in the asset portion we have 7 months remaining. There are definitely a number of ways of accounting for accruals and deferrals in the accounting books. But in the end, it all boils down to two simple questions. How much income is earned? How much expense were incurred during the period? The answers to these questions will always determine how much goes to the profit or loss. And in case of deferrals or prepayments, the balance sheet normally corrects itself through your first analysis. To illustrate, let's take some sample transactions of a company that has a December 31 year end. On April 1, the company paid in advance, building insurance amounting to 24000 On August 31, the company received 36000 for a one-year magazine subscription from a customer starting September of the same year. During the year-end closing process, the company determined the following. Repair services were rendered to a customer during December 30, a few hours before closing amounting to 5000 and it remained unpaid until the next year. And lastly, the company received utilities bill for the month of December amounting to 10000 How do we analyze these transactions? First step is to determine the nature of the transaction based on the matrix that we created. The building insurance is an example of a prepaid expense. The magazine subscription is an unearned income. The repair services is an accrued income. And the utilities bill is an accrued expense. The next step is to determine how they were initially accounted for in the books. For the building insurance, at transaction date, the company debited insurance expense and credited cash. For the magazine subscriptions, at transaction date, the company debited cash and credited unearned revenue. For both the repair services and the utilities bill, they do not have an entry as of December 31. The final step is to determine the adjusting entries. And this is where the questions come in. Out of all the insurance expense the company recorded, how much was actually incurred in year 1? The answer is only those from April to December or 9 months. Hence, you need to remove the 4-month portion from the insurance expense by crediting it and putting it in an asset account. Next, out of all the 36000 received by the company from the customer, how much was actually earned during the year? The answer is only those delivered from September to December or 4 months. Hence, you should have a subscription's revenue equivalent to 4 months of magazine delivery. You do this by transferring that portion from the liability account to the revenue account. Next, of the unbilled and unpaid repairs revenue rendered in December 30, how much was earned during the year? The answer is all of it. Hence, you need to recognize the full amount as an income in debit and accounts receivable representing the amount to be collected in January. Lastly, and you probably already know the answer, how much was actually incurred of the electricity bill that we received? Since it says that the bill pertains to the month of December, then the answer is all of it. What we need to do is debit utilities expense and credit utilities payable, which is a liability account. Ultimately, in the following year, when we pay the utilities, we debit the utilities payable and credit cash. You see, when you focus your analysis on the questions of how much is earned or incurred and you put the answer in the income statement, you'll be on the right track in your adjusting entries. And this is it for the video. I hope that by now you can put all of these knowledge to good use. If you want to get more accounting related content, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. See you!